On tonight's episode of Mind Your Own Business, we meet an aspiring fashion mogul on a mission to inspire passion and positivity. Celebrating Canadian entrepreneurs who are working to build their businesses their way with your hosts, Kevin Shaw. I live with total sight loss. I'm a serial entrepreneur who loves to build, lead, and inspire. And Pradeep Sangha. I'm an entrepreneur and advisor to other CEOs and entrepreneurs around the world. This is Mind Your Own Business. Today's entrepreneur is Ryan. He's a young man who has created a clothing brand called The Positive Inception to spread positivity in our world. We could certainly use some. Ryan's long-term goal is to expand beyond Sudbury, but in the short term, he needs to recover from a nearby fire that has damaged his inventory with smoke. My name is Ryan Benoit, and I'm the owner of The Positive Inception. The Positive Inception is a clothing line based out of Sudbury, Ontario. I started it when I was in school, and I guess I just wanted to, uh, to create something to allow people to be a little more positive and try to make the world a better place, essentially. And it's all about kind of helping people realize their full potential and go for what you, go for what you want in life and dream big and work hard and never give up and persevere, I guess. And no matter what your limitations are, you can achieve anything. You just gotta believe in yourself. For me, growing up with cerebral palsy, it was, I would say I had like a normal childhood. My family and friends uh, were pretty awesome. I never really let it affect what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. And, when I wanted to achieve something, I, I might have, I might have had to do it a different way. It maybe uh, took me a little bit longer, but um, I'm pretty a determined person. Yeah, I, I work out every day, and it's kind of a, a routine for me. Um, I come to the gym, and then I, I go to the store and do my my own thing. But it, it helps me with my everyday life, and it might not be like look uh, physically good, but it helps me. In, physically be a little more independent, more mobile, more flexible. For me, like I, I always have a quote, like don't complain about something that you have the ability to change. Improvement and the pursuit of having certain goals, that's kind of what drives me. And I always love seeing improvement and it drives me to become uh, even better. What I sell in the store is uh, pretty much a streetwear, a hoodie is T-shirts, uh, hats, just uh, every, everyday casual wear, I guess. Pretty special when, when you see people uh, wearing the brand. And, and I think that's, that's one of my favorite parts is even meeting the people when I work, uh, when I come to work every single day, because everyone has their own story and everyone is unique. And it's, it's, it's cool to see people believing in the brand and the community uh, really embracing it. When I first started, uh, I, I was still a student, um, so, so I was just selling out of my parents' house, um, and I would go to different events within the city. Uh, and then after I graduated, I signed a contract with, with the new Sudbury Shopping Center. I had a, a kiosk in the mall for about five months, and then, uh, and then I opened up this spot. So I've, I've been here for about five years now. In regards to the product, I, I do get carried away uh, from time to time, but. I, I like to offer customers different selection, uh, different color schemes, different op different options, and try to change it up. In regards to, to the store, I pretty much work uh, seven days a week. But I do when I when I do need help, I, I definitely have uh, people helping me and, uh, and and friends and family and stuff like that. So yeah, it, it works out pretty good. Well, my name is Mike Mike Benoit, and I'm Ryan's dad. And I'm Joyce Benoit. And I'm uh, his better half. Yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> he's a hardworking uh, young fella. He works seven days a week. Uh, he's very uh, attentive to details. He always wants to make sure that everybody gets uh, treated fairly. Uh, he goes over and above to help the community. Uh, he's very generous in that way. And uh, the community is very good to him as well. And Ryan always says that uh, the more you give, the more you receive. And uh, yeah, I, I believe believe that is the way it is. Uh, and every time we seem to have, a, when we had the COVID and he had uh, uh, certain problems like everybody else was having, uh, he never quit. He kept going, uh, re reinvented himself. Uh, and now he's back into another situation with the fire in the store. And uh, you know what, he's gonna take uh, one, one day at a time and move forward and uh, recover from this and, and move forward. And I believe he will. Yeah, it definitely gets tiring, but I think uh, 
seeing how far I've come, it just keeps uh, it keeps me motivated to keep going and try to try to do better every single day. In regards to the hockey team, it started off something fun. Some of the boys asked me if I wanted to make jerseys for them, and I thought it was it was something super super cool um, to do something special. And uh, these are the guys I I, kinda, I grew up with. I would always go watch them play hockey and uh, and stuff like that, and, and to see them wearing the brand, it's 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 something pretty special for sure. I've always had such a strong uh, support system and and and, and strong friend group and. Uh, they they inspire me. Uh, I always get emotional when I talk about this stuff. The brand is, is pretty well known uh, within the Sudbury community, but uh, I and just to kind of branch out of Sudbury and, and try to become a little bit bigger, or well known uh, across the province or, or even even Canada-wide. When COVID hit originally the first time, uh, that's what kind of saved me is, is online. And, and people would order online, and they could, uh, they could pick it up in store as well, or I, I would ship it out and do uh, local deliveries as well. We were doing that for a bit. And it's hard because a lot of people say that I, I, am, I am the brand, so it's, it's, a, it's always hard to kind of be at two places at once kind of thing. And that's why I thought having the online presence and. Uh, more doing more social media stuff like that. I think <clears throat> that's kind of what I what I need help with. What's going on with the store right now? There was a fire in one of the units in in, in, in this building, and uh, it forced me to shut down for um, hopefully not too long, but they say a couple months. Uh, so so we'll see where that goes. I'm dealing with insurance at the moment, but uh, in regards to stock, there might be uh, smoke damage with it, so it's not sellable. So but uh, that's something that the insurance will have to uh, determine. I think it would just put a damper on things right now. Uh, if I would have to be closed for two months, it's, it's definitely not, not the best circumstances, but something we just gotta, I just gotta deal with and uh, uh, hopefully insurance pulls through and, and, and go from there and come back better and bigger than, than ever, I guess. In regards to help with the mentors, I think it's more long-term. Growing on a bigger scale and and, and uh, trying to get the, the brand more uh, national, I think your perspective drives your performance. And if you have a positive perspective on things, uh, your performance is gonna be positive as well. This is Mind Your Own Business. Welcome back. I'm your host, Kevin Shaw. And with us in studio, as always, is our resident business strategist, Pradeep. Hey, Kevin. We just heard such an incredible story of uh, Ryan recovering from a uh, fire nearby his business, causing some smoke damage. Where does he go from here? He's got the most important thing, which is a positive attitude. I think he'll be able to get through this and actually come out stronger. You know, it's all times like this that business owners can often see opportunities in disaster, right? Definitely. Yeah. Well, let's bring in our mentors to talk to Ryan about positive inception. I'm Karen Wong. I'm a CEO and entrepreneur who has built self-funded businesses from scratch. As a mentor, I help people learn from my wins and mistakes. I'm Henny Yeshidu, award-winning founder, investor, and marketing specialist. My first job, newspaper boy at age 11. I'm Jasmine Ganey Hobbs, and throughout the course of my career, I've helped thousands of entrepreneurs to succeed. Our mentors are back with us. Hello, mentors. Hello. Hey, Kevin. On the line with us via video conference, we have Ryan Benoit of The Positive Inception. Hi, Ryan. Welcome to Mind Your Own Business. Hey, how's it going, guys? Thank you Bye. so much. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. We've heard your story. It sounds like you've been through a lot, and uh, disaster is part of being a business owner and recovering. I want to throw it out to our our, uh, our panel here. Pretty, why don't you start us off? Sure, Ryan. So first of all, I, I love what you're doing. The the message of positivity is absolutely needed, especially with what we've been dealing with over the last couple of years. And obviously, you've gone through a pretty uh, pretty big event for your business with the fire. Maybe you can give us a quick update in terms of where you're at right now. With uh, a few weeks ago, uh, a fire occurred, and even though. Um, uh, the the building my unit is not uh, damaged physically. There was a lot of smoke damage and uh, and, and stuff like that. Now we're just dealing with insurance and um, it's kind of a waiting game and, and seeing where where everything goes. 
I'll throw it out to Jasmine. Uh, in a time like this, where, where should uh, Ryan's focus be? Ryan, I know you've been up through a, a tragedy and, and uh, you know, horrible situation for sure, and, and I'm sure it's thrown you a humongous curveball. What I want to focus on with you, though, is you're going to get through this, and you will. There will be life after this, but um, I want to help you get to the other side of it. So, you know, my question, my first question to you is: Are you surrounded by uh, any advisors? Is your management team? Is it just you? Do you have a board of advisors? Uh, I don't have a board of uh, advisors per se, but I do have a great team around me. Uh, my accounting team. They do. They go. They always go over and above. And they're helping me with the, these insurance claims and, and different things like that, um, and and so I have a, a really really good support system and, and family and friends and the whole community has been pretty amazing through all this. And, and once you get through this, what do you want for the company? I, I think there's a lot of potential to grow out of Sudbury and uh, to try to make it bigger and better and try to reach more people and and and, and spread the message of of uh, positivity and. Uh, just trying to be the best person you can be. And I agree, there's a lot of potential for the brand. My advice to you would be, look to build a really good board of advisors to help you with your growth. And that's gonna be part of the preparation and planning uh, to go province-wide, to go national, and perhaps beyond that. So what you would look to do is really take on professionals who have great experience in retail, in e-commerce, in, um, in all the various aspects of it. You can't do this alone to build a bigger brand, and I think building a board uh, to help you navigate that path uh, would be a great thing for your next steps. Yeah, for sure. That sounds like a great, uh, uh, a great task for the next 30 days. Henny, what about you? Yeah, Ryan, um, I have a quick question uh, about, you know, you mentioned that you want to get out of the Sudbury area, and so can you talk about what your past sales have been outside of Sudbury, on both online or in physical store? It, it, it's probably an 80-20 cut in regards to the store and online. Yep, and I know you mentioned that, you know, you guys had to shut down your uh, store, current online store, due to the fire and because your inventory is on hold, but have you thought about doing, you know, print-on-demand? It's, it's an avenue that you can tap into now currently in your situation where you don't have to hold inventory, but you can still run your online store and make sure that, you know, your brand is still consistent, people are still engaging with your story. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely something I thought about. It's, it was an option that kind of first came to my mind. But when I when I uh, pitched it to the screen printers that I deal with and stuff like that, um, they weren't really keen on it because the way things, the way they there's a, like a setup fee and a cost and like all the different colors for the ink. Um, it was it was, I, I don't know if it would be feasible for the people in which I work with. Um, but uh, it's definitely an avenue that that I exercise but i don't know if it would be the the best for me but um, yeah. maybe it, worse comes to worse you never know right exactly that's definitely a strategy or an avenue that you can take on depending on what the current situation is with this uh future investigation but highly something something that i highly recommend you look into for sure in this meantime well thank you karen you're the last one we haven't heard from yeah and so right uh, touching upon what Henny mentioned, um, yes, for sure, if you're using screen printers, you would have setup fees. But if you're using digital printers, that's usually where print on demand comes in. And so, um, and it's something to remember because people, uh, I, I mean, I worked in production before. So the thing is, a lot of times when it's a low season, a lot of people will take orders that are lower margin, even if it's a higher cost, just to maintain. One thing is the customer base. Another thing is keep the business going, right? Because you still have overhead costs. You might make 20% less margin or profit, but that's still worthwhile because then you're maintaining yourself during this difficult time. And of course, you, you still have that, those customers engaged and you still have product to sell. Um, I was curious, however, what your current situation is for inventory and if you've also considered doing other products besides the existing ones, because your brand is, it can be positive everywhere. Right now, it, it, it's, uh, it's hard because all my inventory was in the store. So I, I didn't really have any inventory anywhere else. But um, yesterday, I actually made a small order uh, for three or four different sweaters. Um, and and I, just the thought process with that, I'm, I'm used to working all the time and, 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 and being not able to, to do my everyday routine, so to say. Um, I, I just wanted to try to uh, be proactive and try, I wanted to try to keep the ball rolling. And right now, I kind of feel stuck in a way like people, a lot of people know about 
what happened and different things like that. But it's it's hard because when this happened, I had so much momentum, and everything kind of stopped, and and, and I'm kind of in limbo. So. I wanted to create some new stuff and, and, and just to kind of get the ball rolling again and, and try to get back to normal. Mentors, how does Ryan get the ball rolling again in the next 30 days? I'll well, start with you, Jasmine. Build your advisory board. Don't do it alone. Any? Uh, focus on the short term. If you can switch your operations, do it in the short term. Karen? Do a little market research, see if you can find some digital printers outside of Sudbury, then see if they can do some drop shipping for you. Test the market out. See if there's other potential opportunities there. And we'll close it up with Pradeep. Well, I would say take this as an opportunity to learn more about your business in terms of what's working and what you can do better. Ryan, what's your, your feedback on the suggestions of our mentors? If it's going to make me, I think, a better business person and, and uh, hopefully I can come out strong, stronger than ever. Well, thank you, mentors, and thank you, Ryan, for being with us. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. All the best, Ryan. Ryan. That was Ryan Benoit of The Positive Inception. You're watching Mind Your Own Business, and we'll be right back. This is Mind Your Own Business. Before the break, we met Ryan, who grew his inspirational streetwear brand from a high school side hustle selling shirts out of his backpack to a thriving brick and mortar store. He met with the mentors who had some advice about how to move beyond the immediate calamity of major smoke damage to his stock from a neighboring store's fire. Pradeep visited Ryan in Sudbury, Ontario 30 days later to see how things were going. Hey Ryan, nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. How you doing? Good yourself? Good. Okay, so here we are at the Positive Inception, your store, and yeah. how are things going? Things are going good. Oh great. Yeah. Maybe we can take a look around then. Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. So Ryan, how are things going? It looks like there's a lot of work being done here. Yeah, everything's going good according to plan. Um, right now they're just doing a fire retardant spray on the ceiling uh, just to make sure everything is good in case something happens again in the foreseeable future. Um, hopefully not, but um, yeah, this should all be cleaned up in the next week or so and then getting the clothes back into the store and, and getting everything back to normal, hopefully. Yeah, and what's happening with the inventory? I know you had a, quite a bit of stock there. Yeah, yeah, luckily everything is good. But I just, as a precaution, like a triple check, I, uh, I hired a company to be able to do like a, a deodorization um, just to make sure everything is good with the clothes, just as an extra precaution, just to make sure everything is good. Uh, yeah, so the, the clothes is, is, is good to go. And uh, when we open, we'll do like a, a, like a back, back reopening sale kind of thing and get some product moving and trying to get back to normal. Yeah, get some traffic in here. Yeah, exactly. So I know some of the mentors had made some suggestions in terms of maybe, maybe taking this as an opportunity to take a look at your business, what's working, what's not working, yeah. as well as maybe setting up an advisory board. Yeah, for sure. Um, I kind of took the opportunity to look behind the scenes of the business and um, <laughs> to see what kind of worked and what doesn't work and work on the things that, that don't work, right? And I had a really hard time with my email marketing and different things like that. So I did a lot more research and kind of implemented things that I wanted to see if it's going to work. And um, due to the fact that we don't have product to sell right now, everything is in storage and getting ready to reopen. I I didn't do um, I did make uh, specific steps to what for when I'm open. I'm just everything is ready to go. And and uh, in regards to new coll new collections, new products, uh, different things like that. And uh, once I, I, I give the go-ahead, everything's going to be into production and come up with some new products, some new sayings, different things like that, which I'm really excited about. But yeah, just kind of work on the things that wasn't really working and hopefully it makes things uh, a lot more smoother and, and a lot better overall. So did you take a look at your business model? Because I know that's what uh, one of the mentors was talking about. Maybe take a look at drop shipping, maybe having less inventory and more you can say on-demand type of printing. Yeah, for sure. Um, and after we did that call, um, I did I did think about it a little more. I have done that in the past, uh, like a direct printing, but it, it didn't really work very well. Like I don't know if it was the company that I used, but uh, but all the printing was coming off and different things like that. So the quality wasn't the best. Uh, but but it doesn't mean that it won't work uh, again. But I I've definitely tried it before. And it wasn't really the best. So, um, but but looking at um, looking back on what happened, 
uh, and different things like that. And having the stock that I had, I definitely had a lot, a way too much. So it was kind of a learning experience for me to kind of keep it smaller uh, and, and and maybe less options than what I did have, uh, and and kind of change my ordering systems and stuff like that. So maybe that was a blessing in disguise as well. Great. So it sounds like you're getting close to reopening the store. Yeah. And you must be excited. Yeah. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks. It's uh, this has been a long time coming. It's something I'm super excited about seeing people again um, and and just getting back to normal and, and and kind of doing what I love to do. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm super excited for you. Your store is going to be opening here real soon. And by the time people are watching this, they're going to have the opportunity to actually come in and get some stuff from you firsthand. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. I think. That's one of my favorite parts of having the business is seeing people, meeting people, and uh, and different things like that. So I'm looking forward to getting back to normal and, and doing what I love to do. Well, that's great. I wish you the very best. Oh, thank you so much. Well, we certainly love the work that Ryan has been doing with his clothing brand, and we can't wait to see what is next. You can always follow Ryan and The Positive Inception on Instagram or Facebook at The Positive Inception. Well, that is a fitting end to our show. We'll be back next time with a story of another fearless entrepreneur. But until then, be sure to support the entrepreneurs in your life, mind your own business, and remember, success comes in a can. Failure comes in a cannot. Director, Nick Appleton. Producers, Nick Appleton, Tyler Cameron, Kevin Kincaid. Editor, Rod Christie. Audio Post, Colin Caddies. Directors of Photography, Kevin Wong, Nick Appleton. Camera operators, Michael Gain, Byron Kachira. Sound recordist, Mike Mirden. Post animation, Devin Alstow. Gaffer Quinn Martin, hair and makeup Michelle Kalea. Casting, Carly Gronowski. Set design, Brian Garvey. Art director, Vita Supra. Integrated described video specialist, Simone Cupid. Content development specialist, Karen McGee. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director production, Karen I. Director programming, Brian Perdue. VP content development and programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Apple Orchard Productions. Copyright 2022 AMI Accessible Media Inc.